So, uh, we have a hole under the capture hair that the cats have made. And every time guests come over, especially Maya, she will run up and hide under the couch. So now that you guys are here, and we want to capture Maya and <laughs> make sure she doesn't run away, I'm gonna just cut it all off. Oh, yeah. It used to be like this small because the movers a few years ago when they were moving my couch They kind of made a little hole and then ever since I got these cats They made this gigantic hole and they always put them so now they can't hide anymore <laughs> Don't film me <laughs> I keep telling you that but you never listen. Oh, sorry. Do you want to hold my Hi guys, Hi. I'm Tiffany. This is Isaac. Hi, I'm Casey. This is Zoe. Zoe this and is Maya. Maya. This is our furry Yay! friend Ted. Originally, we thought he was a girl, so his Wait. name was Zoe starting out until we took him to the vet. We found out it was a boy, so then we just cut his name down to Zoe. And this is Maya, and she was a girl, and we kept her name Maya because she was a girl. <laughs> Well, the reason why we named them these names though is because um, when I was pregnant with Isaac and I was thinking of girl names because I didn't know if I was going to have a girl or a boy but for the two girl names that I fell in love with was Maya for sure. I was like, if I have a daughter, I'm going to name her Maya because I just fell in love with that name. And then Zoe was my second option because I just loved how it sounded. Like It just sounds cute, Zoe. So then once we got these cats, I thought, well... I already got Isaac and I had a boy so I went with Isaac obviously and so I just wanted, I still was craving to have someone in my life named Maya and Zoe so that's how they got their names. Well my nickname for them are my babies, I call them babies and he'll he'll call Zoe his brother sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah I'm like a terrible owner so I, I call them cats every once in a while. Like when I get home, I'll be like, hey, cats. Yeah, it kind of defeats the purpose of uh, having a, a name for your pet, huh? Well, having a nickname for your pet kind of defeats the purpose of having a name for your pet in the first place, because why? You, technically, they don't come with names. So why would you even bother with the nickname to begin with if you named them? Or, you know what I mean? I hate her mind. The kind of cat that Zoe and Maya are tabby cats. Yeah. Tabbies. Tabby cats. Most tabby cats, and I think there's other breeds that have this though, but the cats have an M on their forehead, and so does Zoe. They have M's on their foreheads, and that's a clear sign that they're tabby cats. Oh, uh, we got our cats. Um, a guy named Gary. <laughs> <laughs> that's the next question. May of last year, so May 2013, so it's been over a year now that we've had them. They were a month old when we brought them home. From a guy named Gary. <laughs> From a guy named Gary. We went to his house to check him out. I went on Instagram and I searched the hashtag adopt a kitty. And through that hashtag, I actually found a photo of like a litter of kittens. So I contacted the girl that posted that photo and it turns out that she works at a veterinary's office. She posted the photo to help her client get rid of the cat. Or like, you know, find homes for the cat. She gave me the guy's number, which was Gary. And so we, I called him, we went to go see the kitten, and we saw these two guys, and we fell in love with them, and that's how we ended up with our kitty. Okay, all this fur. Holy f <laughs> <laughs> There's so much fur. All over our house, we're covered in fur. I used to be in my mom's bed. I was just chilling over there, and Zoe came along and just sat in my face. <laughs> The cat's personalities, Maya is very shy and very coy and doesn't like being with people. I don't know, I think Zoe is just kind of weird. He, he acts more like a dog sometimes. Where he kind of just, except for now, now that the cameras are on, he's going to prove us wrong that he's not a dog. But I think he has some dog blood in him. So in our household now, it's forbidden to leave socks laying around because they love to grab the socks and put them in their water bowl. Every day I'll find like a few pairs of socks, like we'll randomly forget, or Isaac he'll fall asleep, he'll take his socks off, just leave them in the floor in his room, and then I'll go to the water bowl and I'll see that they have a whole bunch of socks in there, and I'm like, great, now I have to dump the whole thing out, put clean water in, hang the socks, make sure they get dry. So now it's like, 
No socks being left anywhere. Uh, when I come home from like, especially after like a day at JK, like some like I, I go through the back door and uh, the first thing I, the first room I walk into is Isaac's room because that's the that's where the back door is at. And I'll see his hamper knocked over, and I'll see all of Isaac's laundry just sprawled across the floor. Yeah, they always do that. Every time when I go in my room, I see like, oh, the cats dump it, even the trash can. Yeah, yeah, they knock over trash cans all the time. And, and what's just... missing from your laundry, though? What are the only two things they ever grab from your laundry? Mm, socks. Socks, and what else? Mm, I don't remember. On my underwear too. Yeah, he always, he always <laughs> takes his socks and underwear, and and like Tip says, it, it'll either be in the water or drenched next to a puddle of water on the floor somewhere. <laughs> or like sometimes I've seen like Isaac's underwear like here, like just the furthest room from his room here. It's so random. <laughs> I didn't know the underwear part. That's pretty funny. Yeah, oh, I'll pick it up. Yeah. So by the time you get home, you yeah, I guess you would know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then they'll grab his uh his gloves. Cause like since he has eczema on his hands, he has to wear um, dish dish gloves. Yeah. That's what they call right? Kitchen gloves. Right? Yeah, the kitchen gloves, and we'll always find them like scattered around the kitchen. So now we have to make a con conscious decision to put the gloves and the sponge under the sink, or else they'll get to them. They'll like make holes in his gloves, and we have to throw them away, buy a new pair. But yeah, they love grabbing things. Between like Maya and Zoe when they eat, <laughs> Zoe is so dominant over Maya. It's like if Maya was eating, like it's like you, I only pour food like one bowl at a time. There's two bowls, and I pour food in the first bowl. Even if Maya was the one closest to it and she was about to get get into the food, Zoe would come in and like kind of just shove her out of the way and start eating all the time. And it doesn't matter. And then I put food in the second one, and every once in a while, Zoe would have the audacity to be like, "Oh, that one's mine too," and he'll start eating out of that bowl. And then like Maya would have to like keep going around him just to get uh, like a, get in position to eat at least like one bite, you know, out of two bowls. That's why Maya's so skinny too, because like, but what we need to do is separate them and like lock one into one room with their food and the other one with their food, and until so they're both done, so then Maya could get her bowl of food. But that's pretty time consuming, and we just haven't had the chance to do that. But that's why Zoe is that much bigger than Maya, because he just dominates her all the time. You made this observation oh, the other day. One eats like me, one eats like you. Yes, that's true. So I made an observation uh, the other night that when Maya eats, she like so if the whole bowl is filled with food, she'll only eat like piece like portion by portion. So she'll move into like the whole bowl to like finish all of her food. But though he just attacks it, like he'll just eat over here and over here and over here and over here, and that's how we are. Zoe eats like Casey and I'll eat like Maya. Like we, I like to have my food neatly placed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was so awesome. You had one arm in the thing. It was like a man. Like a trucker. Yeah. Hey, y'all. Zoe is kind of like our neighbors because when we sleep, they just be like, like that. Oh, you're right. It's funny because they don't like noise. But as we are sleeping, like at 3 in the morning, they'll be running up and down the hallways, making yeah. all this noise. Like this. And they're not considerate. Like that. <laughs> like we're trying to sleep. We just do this. And we just keep, Zo, stop, and Maya, stop. And they just ignore us. They just do, still. Yeah, I think cats are, I don't think humans are supposed to have cats as pets. But humans force them to be our pets because they can't fend for themselves in the wild because they're not really capable in the wild. But really though, their biology is completely opposite from what humans are. Because humans sleep at night, they wake up at night. And two, they don't want to be in your presence until they choose to, which is almost like never. It's like when you want them to be with you, they don't want to be with you. So it's like it's a complete clash of lifestyles. I don't know why we even have cats. But I love him very much. We should just get rid of them, right? You should just get rid of them. No, I like him. <gasps> I love Zoe's belly. Me too. That's my favorite. Our favorite thing is to do to Zoe is to dig our face into his furry belly because it's so cute. I <laughs> know. And he's so fat that it's like a big pillow. It's like a big fluffy pillow. I, I wish we could just shave Zoe off and just make a pillow because it's so furry. <laughs> <laughs> we could just use Zoe as a pillow, you silly. Let me grab 
Oh, cool. Maya. Oh, cool. Maya's right behind you. How, how about Maya? <laughs> oh, that's Elsa. Here! Anything favorite about Maya? <laughs> Maya? As you can tell, Zoe is the favorite here. I think pets in general, they're kind of like, they're kind of what makes home home, you know? It's like you come home and you have like this furry face that's here to greet you, you know? So it's like, I think it's like the one thing that, it's like the icing on top in terms of what home is for anyone. Anyone out there who has a pet, you know, like I think their pet is what makes, you know, makes it feel good to be home and worth it to spend time at home rather than going out, you know? So I think for me, it's like that, that's my favorite thing about having them around. I think for me and Tiff, like with us being together and like, I mean at the time when we got the cats, we were already living together, but we didn't have like, she moved in with me, so it wasn't like we found the apartment together. We weren't living here yet, and like we didn't really share anything together. And I think the cats were like the first step in terms of, you know, cementing our relationship together in terms of sharing something that meant something to us, you know, something that was sentimental to us both, that we could actually have equal share in, um, in, in a physical form, I guess, like with these cats. So. I think that that's I think that's what these cats mean to me the most. Well thanks for watching guys. I hope you learned a lot about us and our furry babies. And we'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you were doing. <laughs> I was sitting on purpose in front of his face. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>